Hello everyone, my name is Eva Shuba from the Climate Alliance um, and I'm going to talk about the co-creation methodology um, that was developed in the EMPOWER project to engage key stakeholders. The EMPOWER project produced key outcomes for, by policy co-creation involving various stakeholders in the design to address energy poverty in the private directed sector. The private rented sector is a sector that is uh, not well researched and where renovation is a key factor to reduce energy poverty. But that is also a sector where the split incentive hinders the owners to invest in energy efficient renovations, especially when the tenants are energy poor. And although implementation settings can be diverse, what we can, what we could find in NPOR, uh, we clustered into information and training instruments and in renovation grants. We used the co-creation methodology to uh, support the further development of both type of measures and mapped the different dimensions of energy poverty in this sector, but also collected various measures and implementation methodologies um, in the energy poverty dashboard. The co-creation method was the primary way uh, to further develop the different measures, and it supported the uh, implementation of 10 different measures in seven different countries. When we designed them, when we started the co-creation process, the first thing we did, and uh, in general, that, that is how um, you should start as well if you opt for this methodology, is to learn about your target group. And our target group were the energy poor households in this sector who were facing various challenges. And these were also the primary ways to identify them uh, for us. They face high energy bills, which is not very different from um, other sectors, can't afford fuel or e-cars. They also live, and that was uh, one of the key findings um, in substandard housing conditions. Um, and through uh, the co-creation method, we also learned that they restrict their um, own energy consumption, but most importantly, they lack uh, control over um, energy efficient renovation of the building where they live. One of the main challenges for uh, reaching out to the tenants uh, was identification, of course, how do you identify your target group? Um, and when we succeeded, uh, we found that language barriers and mistrust um, is a key challenge and barrier to involve them um, in the co-creation process. So we dev developed various uh, methodologies and various tools uh, to reach out to them and to keep them interested. Uh, out of which um, you can find on the Empor website uh, downloadable materials, visual materials translated in various languages. The key element of uh, the co-creation is participation, but we need to understand what participation uh, for us and for uh, the co-creation actually means. The co-creation approach um, is suitable to tailor practicable services or information material to the needs of the energy poor. And this is why um, when we talk about participation in the co-creation, um, it's not it doesn't only mean that you uh, develop a material and then you, by a focus group method, for example, check if, um, if it would reach uh, and if it would meet the needs of the target group, but you also develop uh, the materials together with the participants so that um, they gain, in our case, uh, they gain the experience of um, influencing the policy measure development and its outcomes. The inclusion of trusted intermediaries was the key to success in our case. We involved civil society organizations and other actors from the social domain. So they helped us to overcome trust-related issues or barriers 
but also um, this created new channels of outreach uh, for energy advice and information services. If you're interested in how well, we, we, we did that, you can um, check out our materials. We involved the Energy Box Initiative um, in the Netherlands or the Caritas uh, for the Stromspatschek Initiative in uh, Germany. What, uh, what what did we actually did, and this is this was the core and um, basis of uh, the co-creation. Uh, we designed a process with several meetings where all stakeholders and target groups were together uh, participating in activities such as meetings um, that were leading towards the solution. And this was a facilitated um, and mentored process involving not only the process management itself, but also uh, concrete materials um, such as uh, amending the energy advice service uh, with funding for appliance re replacement or just uh, mentioned already mentioned uh, visual visualization visualization documents. So who are the stakeholders that we be involved? In our case, um, the stakeholder groups were identified um, in the stakeholder mapping um, and uh, stakeholder analysis process. I'm going to talk about that in a second. By um, asking um, very simple questions. Who are the beneficiaries of the measure? Uh, who could be adversely affected? Who would resent change and mobilize resistance? Who has which rights and responsibilities? Who has access to relevant resources? Who could be the voiceless groups? And whose behavior has to change for success? In our case, we involved landlords, but also uh, tenant groups. We involved public utilities and municipalities, national policymakers, but also energy consultants who um, actually meet um, the energy poor households. And most importantly, we involve charitable and social work associations and citizen groups who had the direct access to the energy poor citizens. The benefits uh, for this kind of stakeholder engagement uh, is long lasting uh, success. So for policy implementation or any kind of measure implementation, uh, you want to have a lasting impact uh, that effect effectively uh, makes a change. With the cooperation method, we were not only using the different um, stakeholder perspectives, but we also increased the legitimacy of the different measures that w will be and are um, in implementation for a longer time. And how does this process look like? We essentially have three different um, but connected stages. We have the preparation and the engagement uh, strategy. We have the cooperation uh, itself and the monitoring and readjustment. You see a lot of meetings here. This is uh, very important for the cooperation process. You also see two different groups here because in MPOR during the the engagement strategy and the stakeholder mapping, um, we identified a barrier that was hindering um, the different stakeholder groups to work effectively together. So as a risk management um, possibility or a risk management strategy, uh, we allowed them to meet separately, uh, but the meeting results were informing each other in the process. Roughly speaking, um, in the first uh, phase, the identification and the analysis happens. In the second phase, um, you can, as, a, as I mentioned, you can use different uh, meetings to um, actually guide the, the co-creation process, where the first meeting has served to analyze the problem and to find first ideas. Um, and the second meeting, you can already come with a concept that is presented, and in the meetings that follow that, you refine this concept. 
The third phase, the monitoring and readjustment, um, is uh, not necessarily only the policy implementation and uh, um, checking your success against the KPIs, um, but you can or also schedule um, a final meeting uh, for all groups um, and see if you need to readjust the process uh, for the um, for the next co-creation uh, action. We are going to dive into the first part um, of this process, and that uh, starts, well, we opted for the stakeholder power interest analysis. Um, the stakeholder analysis is an important step in the preparation, and it helps you to understand, assess, uh, and group the involving uh, stakeholders. And this is important um, so that you later can define um, the various uh, strategies, how to engage them. Identifying the stakeholders' key interests is uh, crucial to target the project messaging, so the communication uh, strategy. So you need to understand who you're talking to, what are their experiences, what are the expectations towards the policy, what are the current and potential future benefits and costs of the policy? Uh, who are you talking to? What are their rights and responsibilities? This analysis will help you to uh, design an engagement strategy that uh, will tackle problems such as interest conflicts with the goals of the policy, um, but also it will help you to mobilize resources um, and to help the stakeholders to mobilize resources or who are willing to mobilize. And for this, the power interest analysis um, helps you to understand the dependencies, the needs, the expectations, um, the control situation and the power situation. And when you do this analysis, uh, you will be able to match um, the different groups um, to the four quadrants of um, the power and interest uh, graph, as you can see it here. And this framework um, will help the stakeholder mapping uh, to be designed with regard to different dimensions. You can choose knowledge, support, time, or ownership. Um, we chose uh, power and interest. Out of the resulting four quadrants that reflect the four types of stakeholders, um, those with high power but varying interest, and those with high interest but low power will be especially important to address in the co-creation uh, process. This classification um, also guides typical stakeholder communication and engagement strategies. The high interest and high power stakeholders will be your key players in your engagement strategy. Those are the ones um, who you will manage closely. You should show them sustained management attention and engage them on a regular basis to maintain a good relationship. The low interest but high power stakeholder groups uh, can influence the future overall contact. Um, and their low interest will be a challenge because decreasing engagement could, could make them um, a risk to the project target. So you need to engage, consult, and offer them attractive content and formats. Um, and you may want to convert them into key players. The high interest but low power stakeholder groups are supposed to be keep informed uh, because they have little influence, but high interest in the issue. They may serve as important ambassadors for the project. Um, and a risk could be that the stakeholders with greater influence uh, dominate the discussion and design the policies. Those with low interest and low power 
um, should be monitored closely and they should be just kept updated. After conducting the uh, stakeholder analysis, you will move into, or you can move into the context analysis. The context analysis looks at uh, the various situation of um, the stakeholder groups. And the context analysis will help you to guide the communication strategy with your stakeholders. After finishing your analysis, you are now ready to develop the engagement strategy. What you see here is a table of uh, different uh, possible strategies that were developed for one group, which were the tenants. And you will see that the different barriers for engagement were addressed uh, each uh, with possible strategies. Now, of course, your time and uh, financial resources and human resources uh, can be um, a limiting factor here. Um, but developing such a table with various uh, supporting strategies will help you later uh, when you need to face certain problems that you cannot, couldn't foresee. And so the engagement strategy itself in this co-creation process um, is something that uh, is closely related to uh, the first stage of the co-creation process. During resourcing and planning, uh, you will have to look at the resources of your target group and the practical implementation uh, of involvement. These two parts of the process uh, happen usually uh, almost in the same time um, and involves a closer look on your stakeholders based on the analysis and um, potentially also uh, based on um, preliminary meetings with them. In the planning process, um, you are defining the concrete actions that are necessary uh, to recruit the participants of the group. And you are not only recruiting them, you also prepare them for the co-creation co uh, process. So you sensitize, sensi sensitize them. In the sensitizing um, part of the co-creation process, uh, you will use the different information um, that you collected and you analyzed, um, and you will be able to develop um, and purchase and implement the different incentives uh, for the stakeholders to stay engaged for a long time. Uh, this is the time for bilateral contacts um, and the recruitment process for um, the stakeholder group, react group, let's say establishment um, is also happening here. So what um, per interaction in person um, starts here, uh, if possible, of course, uh, in case of um, municipalities or large distances, of course, digital um, meetings um, um, are now uh, not only allowed, but um, are much more common. And it will be crucial to build up a trusting relationship here. Trusting relationship will help in the facilitation process because dealing with a sensitive issue, um, skilled facilitation takes into account all the information that was collected in the previous processes. It's important that the facilitators create a trusting environment during um, the co-creation activities and that participants feel comfortable and inspired to share their experiences and ideas. They should also clearly communicate uh, that the session is a safe place and the confidential treatment of participants' private information. 
Facilitating collaborative activities with diverse participants requires careful observation of the individual needs. So you might need to uh, consider a group of facilitators for the entire process. Evaluation is um, not only the last part of the project, but it also um, may start a new title of the co-creation, uh, depending on how many topics and um, how you design your process. The evaluation reflects here not only the, uh, the session outcomes, but the entire process. And ideally, you developed um, key indicators in the planning phase that you now check back on. With the co-design process being both iterative and interactive, the accurate evaluation and communication of the outcomes uh, with your stakeholders groups um, is crucial. Besides the first assessment by the implementing group, evaluation of inputs in terms of their practicality should be jointly performed uh, with the React group members or uh, cooperation group members um, and, uh, and the group of organizers. An additional step could be um, impact monitoring of the redesigned process. And this is the full um, image, the full cycle for um, the engagement strategy preparation. What I'm going to um, show you are four different tips that we found during our co-creation projects, um, the various elements that um, helps um, not only policy development, but um, single measure development as well. So existing networks um, are, uh, are an element that can be identified um, in the stakeholder mapping where you talk to your stakeholder groups uh, to see what relations and how uh, what relations they have and how embedded they are in their local environment and use these existing network structure structures to get to the stakeholders and to um, involve them in the first place uh, but to keep them involved as well communication can make or break this process. Communication measures are usually developed um, in the planning phase based on the stakeholder mapping and the power interest analysis. The engagement strategies usually involve uh, several communication uh, steps. And they are extremely important here to consider the barriers, especially uh, with vulnerable groups. When the different communication tools are developed, of course, you need to find the right channel. Uh, and this channel must consider the group goals. Targeting uh, young people might want to choose a different channel to reach them um, than uh, elderly people. So these are very simple uh, questions that you want to ask uh, when you design your communication strategy. You saw that in N4, uh, we were organizing uh, several different meetings to reach our Caucasian process goal. Um, and this is uh, an approach that we can recommend warmly because regular meetings are not only helping you in the process to reach your uh, target, but also create trust and uh, feedback information um, that is necessarily to maintain the process. The project messages um, are developed in the very beginning when you uh, design your communication tools for the engagement. Um, there, I would like to highlight three parts uh, when you develop your message uh, 
to your stakeholder groups, the challenge, the, miss, the mission, and the offer. Energy poverty is, um, is a topic that is not necessarily known uh, among, your star, uh, um, among your target groups. So information about what energy poverty is uh, should be part of the challenge. Of course, you want to measure your success and the, the evaluation of um, the policy measure or the evaluation of the co-creation process can happen just like with MPOR through key performance indicators, but it's important to understand what do you want to measure. We measured the design itself, we measured the the capacity building through the process, and we also measured the outcomes um, of implementing um, the co-designed measures. How we did it, uh, you can read in uh, um, in our documents um, on the NPOR website. It is, uh, however, um, important to understand that this is an iterative process. So the evaluation can happen at the end of each stage um, and it informs the next stage. The key performance indicators uh, need to recognize the specific needs and presence of vulnerable households uh, or, and energy poor households um, through explicit definitions, targeting and monitoring and they should be developed in an inclusive and comprehensive manner by involving the affected um, target groups. And they should be also connected to national policy landscape. Otherwise, um, you might be out of uh, the policy context um, of, your, uh, of your country and their ability to generate new uh, capacities to combat energy injustices um, is uh, important. In terms of outcomes, uh, reaching energy poor tenants uh, and alleviation of energy poverty is when defining the key policy indicate, uh, key performance indicators. With MPOR, we, we developed through the co-creation various policy recommendations. Um, and you can see that one of the key recommendation was to collaborate, co-create and combine. Uh, the cooperation and co-creation um, is not only a methodology, but it could be also a goal. So depending on um, how you plan to develop your measure with this methodology, for example, it's important to think about uh, the ways you will do it. And co-creation can be a successful way to involve your key stakeholders and ensure a lasting design. You can find our recommendations, the key policy recommendations um, on the uh, Still Live MPOR website, including various descriptions of how to um, implement these recommendations. The key policy recommendations are accompanied by um, several policy fishes for each country we were active in, um, describing exactly the specific national uh, policy issues and how to overcome them. You can, of course, scan and download the outcomes of the process with the QR code, what you can see here, or go to our website. Thank you very much.